So the purpose of this video is to help you do this problem. So this is not really a solution video. First, I will draw the diagram. You can draw it in your notebook then. And then I'll give you a sequence of hints leading up to the solution. So at each chapter or at each hint, you should pause and try the problem on your own. All right. So let's first draw the picture. I'll draw three points A, B, C. And there is this triangle A, B, C. Let's take any point D on the line B, C. Let's join A, D. We will do, draw two circles. One is through A, B, D. And then we draw another circle, which is through A, D, C. Okay, these two circles are drawn. Now, let's mark the point E and F, which are the intersection points of the two circles with A, C and B, D. We'll also draw the circle through A, B, C, the circumcircle through A, B, C. Now, let's join C, F and produce it to hit the red circle. Red circle is the circumcircle of A, B, C. And let's call that point F1. Similarly, we will join B, E and produce it to meet the red circle at E1. And let's extend A, D to meet the red circle at D1. All right. Now, we will draw two triangles, D, E, F. That's the first triangle. And the other triangle is D1, E1, F1. And finally, let's mark the in center of D, E, F, which is I. Now the diagram is ready. You can also draw this diagram in your notebook and then come back to this video where we will discuss the solution. But I will do that in a sequence of hints so that you can do it with me. Let me first tell you what the goal is. Suppose I1 is the in center of D1, F1, E1. I have not drawn I1 in this picture yet. So, so if I1 is the in center of D1, F1, E1, this triangle, our goal is to show that E, F, I1, I is cyclic. This is the main claim of the problem. That is E, F, wherever I1 is, I, this particular quadrilateral is cyclic. That's what we want to show. And we will do this in a sequence of steps. So as a first step, and this is a hint again, step one, I would say show that CF is actually a bisector of F1 and BE is actually a bisector of E1. This is quite incredible. You join CF, if you remember the picture, but if you remember how we drew the diagram, you know that if we joined CF and we extended it to meet at F1. What I am claiming is that this is actually the angle bisector of F1. So CF1 bisects angle F1 and similarly BE1 bisects angle E1. BE1 bisects angle E1. Now why is that? Well, I'll show you the first one and you can try the second one. So let's look at CF1. 
YCF1 would bisect angle F1. Problem solving strategy. The strategy is this. I call it dance on the circles. And believe me that this particular strategy is actually useful for a multiple geometry problems not just this one. So it's very important that you sort of learn this strategy. It, I call it dance on the circles. Let me show you what it is all about. My goal is to show that CF1 bisects angle F1. To do that, I need to show that these two angles are equal. Of course, only then it will be an angle bisector. So what I'll do is, I'll start with one of the angles, let's call it theta, and I will use properties of cyclic quadrilaterals to dance on these three circles. So one circle, two circle, and three circle. So let me show you how it is done. Let's first focus on this angle theta. It is subtended by CD1 on the red circle. Now let's look at what other angle it is going to. So this is theta, CD1 subtends this angle on the red circle as well. So this is also theta. Now if you look carefully, this angle is also subtended by CED arc on this black circle, right? So we, we now have we have now switched to the black circle from the red circle so this ed subtends theta now let's see what else the ed subtends on this black circle so ed also subtends this angle on the black circle so this angle is oops this angle is theta now we dance back to the red circle. You see why I'm calling I'm calling this the dance of the on the circles. So I dance back to the red circle. Since this is theta, therefore here this angle will also be theta. I have to join these two first, of course. So this is also angle theta. Now one final time. I notice that this angle is theta and it is subtended by E1C but E1C also subtends this angle at F1. So this is also theta. And we are done. We are done showing that these two angles are equal. It's extremely important that you understand this strategy this strategy of dancing on the circles because it is useful in variety of other problems. Okay. Now, the second thing that I claimed is that BE1 bisects angle E1. I, I hope you can show it. You can show it in the comment actually. This is alpha and this is alpha. Give me a detailed argument for this in the comment section. Use the strategy of dancing on the circles. Finally, we can conclude that this one must be the in-center of F1, E1, D1 because this is the angle bisector of F1 and this is the angle bisector of E1 and they are intersecting at the point I1. Hence, I1 must be the in-center. Notice that if you do the dance on the circles, you will figure out that this angle is also alpha. In fact, exactly in the same way, if we join AF1, this angle will also be alpha. Now let's go to the step two. 
and I call this step the cyclic pentagon move. Again, this is such a powerful tool, such a powerful configuration in geometry that you should definitely look out for it. So what is the cyclic pentagon move? Well, suppose you want to prove that four points are cyclic. What you would do is you would take three of those four points and show that it is cyclic with some other point some other point we i don't know what point it is at the moment but take three of those points and show that it's cyclic with some other point and then take other three of the points and show that it's cyclic with that previously held new point so basically there are five points which are cyclic now and you get a cyclic pentagon it's a very powerful strategy it is useful in a variety of problems. So here I would say the hint is this hint and you can pause the video and try it on your own hint is A F I 1 I E is a cyclic pentagon. Try to show that A F I 1 I E is cyclic pentagon. How do you do that? Well, first, let's look at A, F, I, 1, E, this thing. Surely, since this is theta and this is alpha, this angle right here in this particular triangle is 180 minus theta plus alpha. In this triangle, if this is theta and this is alpha, then this angle is 180 minus theta plus alpha notice that angle a is theta plus alpha so surely this is a cyclic quadrilateral a f i 1 e is cyclic okay now let's look at a f i e recall that i is the in center of d f e I is the in center of triangle DFE. We want to find out this angle. Why? Because if we can show that this angle right here, that is EIF, if this angle plus angle A is 180 degree, then we would be able to say AFIE is cyclic. And then we would have a cyclic pentagon and finally, we would be able to say EFI1IE is cyclic because, of course, these are the four points of the five points which are cyclic. So the four points must be cyclic as well. Okay, so we are almost done. We are almost done. So let's do some calculation. Since, since I is the in center of DFE, Surely this is F by 2 and this is E by 2, the angle value. So this is 180 degree minus E plus F over 2. And a little calculation will tell you that this is simply 90 degree plus D by 2, where D is this angle. In the comment section, can you tell me why 180 minus E plus F by 2 is the same as 90 degree plus D by 2? Okay, we are almost done. Using the fact that this is a cyclic quadrilateral, A, F, D, E is a cyclic quadrilateral, we see that this angle right here is angle A. Because cyclic quadrilaterals have this property, this external angle is equal to the interior opposite angle. Similarly, since AEDB is cyclic, therefore this angle right here is also angle A. Again, external angle is equal to the interior opposite angle. So clearly, angle D right here 
angle D right here is 180 minus 2A. So if you look at 90 plus D by 2, which was my value at angle I, this becomes 180 plus, this becomes 90 plus 180 minus 2A by 2, which is simply 180 degree minus angle A. And that's exactly what we needed. Because if this is 180 degree minus A, then this angle is 180 minus A and this angle is angle A. And together they become 180 degree. So again, we have a cyclic quadrilateral. So now then, now we have a cyclic pentagon then, which means that EFII1 is cyclic. Okay. So let me summarize quickly what we have learned so far. The first thing is dance on circles for angle chasing. Very important. It's a beautiful strategy in geometry. The second thing that we learned is look for cyclic pentagons. This is a powerful strategy to show that a certain triangle quadrilateral is cyclic. You take four points at a time and then you build a pentagon and the reference point helps you to show that the other four points are cyclic. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this problem. If you like doing this problem, keep on doing great mathematics and I will see you in the next one.